This video is going to talk about the SAP ECC to S4 HANA migration. It's kind of a big deal. This is video one of four that I'll, I'll be going over here. And so my name is Tim Rutherford. This is video one of four. This is the introduction to the migration. So it's going to cover kind of a, an overview of what's happening with it. There are three other videos that are meant to be watched together. So they're not modular in nature. If you're watching one of them, it doesn't necessarily make sense unless you're watching all of them. So again, make sure you are watching all of the videos, not just this one. So who am I? I'm a member of the SAP University Alliance, which is within the next gen organization, the category. I'm also a member of ASUG, America's SAP user group. Both of those I've been part of since 2011. I attend yearly workshops for SAP, and this is on the instructor side for universities. So I've learned about HANA, analytics, blockchain, all kinds of good stuff. I have facilitated thousands of ERP simulations. And I'll talk a little bit more about that in a moment. I've worked at UW-Milwaukee, which is one of the flagship universities for SAP, Marquette University, and also Universidad del Rosario in Bogota, Colombia. All doing this uh, strategic management ERP simulation. I've also worked as a consultant working for corporations and manufacturers, both small and large who are manufacturers or SAP shops, and I've actually even worked for SAP itself. The simulation is very top level. It's a top level market simulation and it uses SAP ERP as an interface. So unlike some of the other business simulations out there that maybe are a website, this is using actual ERP with the simulation of time. So uh, just some background here and telling you who I am. I'm not a salesperson, I don't work for SAP. <laughs> I started teaching SAP and ERP in 2011. I found the simulation uh, within the, that teaching aspect and uh, have used it for many years, gotten to know it really well, become kind of an expert. Check out my YouTube channel. <laughs> uh, and then there's is the simulation. Because it's using SAP ERP as the interface, the simulation itself has migrated from ECC to S4 HANA and, and there's a change management uh, opportunity, which I you know, I was never expecting that within it, but that's my background. I have really nothing to gain from giving you this information. <laughs> well, let's talk about the simulation itself. So there are, if you, you know SAP, there is the full cash to cash business cycle. And within that, there are a number of different things that are taking place. So there's planning, procurement, production, and the sales process. There's lots of stuff that happens within it. The nice thing about this simulation, because it uses SAP, as the interface, you get to see how different decisions impact financially within the organization. So you get to see how a poor forecast ends up throwing off production and sales. The nice thing within the simulation itself is that much of it is automated. So a lot of the minutia, things like uh, goods movement and updating the financials, that's all happening behind the scenes. So we're simulating the passage of time using SAP ERP and you get to see within a few minutes, essentially, how your decisions are impacting your, uh, your bottom line. Now you're going to see, and you can, you've already seen somebody eating a bowl of muesli here. This is a muesli manufacturing company. It's a type of cereal that's very popular in Europe. So you'll see that throughout these videos, I'll refer to things, the, the raw materials from Muesli, and you'll see the imagery from Muesli. Just realize that it's a small manufacturing company and for simplicity's sake, it's using Muesli. Now within this, there are essentially four different roles that uh, people can take, participants take, and those roles end up having, uh, you know, they get to see what their role is doing in the total bottom line within the organization. The passage of time, it's about one minute per simulated day. We play multiple rounds. The rounds are 20 to 30 days, depending on the simulation that you're running. And you get to see within a short amount of time, how different decisions actually impact the bottom line. Now on the academic side, you can probably see from a strategic management perspective, but then on the organizational side, the corporations, it has been used in the past as a, a SAP new user training, preparation for the TERP 10, some group dynamics, strategic management, just getting people together talking about strategy. And of course it's turned into the, uh, the ECC change management, uh, change management tool. So just some more background on me. I've worked within technology pretty much my entire life. I was eight or nine years old when I started doing computer programming. 
taught myself how to do that in college. I programmed an ERP system for a small manufacturing company. It uh, was using DBase 3 Plus, migrated to DBase, DBase 5 after a while for Windows. Had rudimentary MRP and inventory sales accounting. It did everything that the manufacturing company needed. The MRP part of it was a, a big piece, planning the procurement and the production. After that, I programmed a whole payroll <laughs> system for uh, a, a small service organization that was also using DBase 5. Uh, took the payroll process, the benefits process, down from a couple of days to about 20 minutes. <laughs> so that was kind of fun. I took my programming skills and started getting into web design and not just HTML, but PHP and MySQL. I won three awards from Microsoft within one of the companies that I worked for, uh, for Activate the Internet contest in 1996. From there, I kind of realized I was more of an extrovert than an introvert. At least there was some extrovert part of me. So I took all of my technology knowledge and went into the sales side. And I became a solutions architect for a small company. I wore many hats within it. We've sold computer networks, the servers, the workstations, all the different server software that went along with it. Uh, training was within it as well. It was all in-house, it was all turnkey. So I had some project management tasks, some change management. This was in the 90s, so I was part of the uh, MS-DOS to Windows migration. And then we also hit and went through Y2K as well, which had its own technological requirements. So who am I these days? <laughs> I'm an instructor, uh, I'm teaching at the universities, uh, just an adjunct, but just an instructor. I am an author, I have uh, the simulation that I use, ERP Sim, I've gotten to know it so well that I created a textbook to go along with it. The second edition, first and second edition of the textbook were really about ERP for competitive advantage. So it was about the processes, strategic management, all the things that came together for being competitive, and it's being used by business schools, engineering, and I actually have a nursing program that's using it. With the, uh, the migration to S4 within the simulation, the third edition has added a new piece of it. So it's using ERP SIM to simulate the ECC to S4 HANA migration. So that's also turned into a consulting opportunity. I've worked for a few companies helping out within the change management process. So the, the way that that works is you're using the simulation and we're setting it up for, let's say, three rounds. They get some experience working within those actual SAP processes on the ECC side. So we use the SAP GUI emulating ECC. And then midway through, we say, okay, it's Friday afternoon, Monday morning, you're coming in and poof, we've switched over to uh, S4 HANA. And we start using uh, uh, Fiori. Now this is all the end user perspective. It doesn't get technical at all. It's really just, giving people the opportunity to see what's coming from an end user perspective. I provided this simulation at events for ASUG Wisconsin, ASUG Tennessee. I was part of the onboarding and training process for SAP new hires. Hey, that's me. So uh, I worked with some fairly new hires. Some of them are brand new. Some of them have been there for a few weeks, a couple months, but working with them to understand the migration. I'll talk about that in another video as well. So these videos, as you're watching these, realize that they're my lecture videos for my ERP classes. So it's showing my students the real world app applicability, <laughs> that's a big word, of this content. Uh, and then also for those of you who are coming from the real world, realizing how real world these courses are using this simulation. So I fully expect that someone who is not my student is watching this video. You're lucky you don't get to take a quiz on it. <laughs> you just get to get the information and move on. So here we go. Who am I? Well, am I a university instructor, a consultant, author? What am I? Just realize I have no financial gain in giving you my opinion in all of this. Um, if you are a university instructor, maybe you'll use my textbook. I don't know. Maybe. Royalties are tiny. <laughs> if you're a company with SAP looking for change management, maybe you'll look at using me. I don't know. But that's not my purpose within this. My purpose is really to pass along the information. Everything that I have done with ERP SIM for my YouTube videos and my textbook has really been about covering something that hasn't been covered somewhere else. So this is an S4 HANA discussion. The differences are very much technical. There's the hardware, the software, the data storage. It's all integrated. It's all kind of the same thing. This is a fairly simplified version of what's happening. And I haven't seen that out there. I haven't seen a YouTube video that really kind of covers all of the aspects of it. 
simply, understandably, and in shorter videos. <laughs> so that's my attempt here. Now, something to point out. I only know what I know. Uh, I'm not an authority in these things. If you've done your homework, you probably know more than I do. I don't plan to debate facts with anyone. What I'm going to give out within this is close enough, it's good enough to discuss the migration for the average person, certainly for people making decisions and for end users themselves. So let's jump in. This migration, there are comparisons from people saying that's kind of like DOS to Windows that took place in the 90s. Now this is uh, the MS-DOS 6.22 step up. This is the very last release of Microsoft DOS. This is what's really become the 21st century Windows that we know. Windows 95 was the first release. Now, Windows 3.1 was released in 1992. This was in 1994, this last version of DOS. Windows 3.1 was regarded by many to be the best in the pre-Windows 95 area. And for many of us, we saw the writing on the wall. We knew it was going to a Windows-based system. Many of us still use DOS, but it, we started seeing, well, it, there are benefits to the Windows side. When I started working in technology as a solutions ar architect, it's late 90s, you know, mid late 90s, I had law firms, doctor's offices still using DOS. And what I was hearing from them is we just bought these computers. <laughs> uh, in law firms and doctor's offices, specifically picking on them, there was WordPerfect for DOS and it was very popular. It's very well used for people that are constantly typing, typing up documents. So law firms, doctor's offices used WordPerfect for DOS. The support staff was used to it. There are all kinds of keyboard codes that help you move quickly. And then here we are coming along saying, ah, uh -uh, you gotta go to Windows, Microsoft Word, and people didn't like it. Now support ended for Windows 95, DOS, and 2001. When I was working within this, we did as much as we could to get people to move over, but I'm sure people were still using it. So this is kind of the same thing where it was switching from a different interface. This is all end user perspective. Uh, moving from this text interface to a Windows-based interface that everybody's used to at this point. Another migration comparison is to Y2K. Now many people say Y2K was a joke, but it was a very real problem. Now, the reason why some people think it was a joke is because for years leading up to it, we had newspapers like this that were saying it was Armageddon, the world's coming to an end, and things are just going to stop working. So that didn't happen. <laughs> and if you don't know what Y2K was, what was happening is back in the 70s, when space, memory space was very limited, what they did is they hard-coded the date. So it would be something like this. It would be 010100, and the 19 was hard-coded. So anytime the year was put in, it was just two digits. Well, if you have it hard-coded for 1900 on January 1st, 2000, it becomes January 1st, 1900. So there were years of people going through and making changes, becoming Y2K compliant. The company I worked for did a lot with that. We didn't do any of the software side, but on the hardware side, we did Y2K compliance. What ended up happening on January 1st, 2000 was not Armageddon, as you're probably aware, but it was things like this. So this was a sign that came through. It's the 3rd of January, 1900. There was a spy satellite. That was probably the highest level thing we know of that went wrong with Y2K. The spy satellite went out for a while, uh, but no big changes. And it's because people went through and changed the code. They went through and made it. So instead of being hard coded in 1900, they went to 2000 or they actually made a change. So instead of updating the code, they switched ERP systems. And SAP was one that a lot of companies said, you know what, rather than fix this code, let's just go somewhere else. Let's do something that is Y2K compliant, inherently Y2K compliant. So many moved from their legacy systems to SAP. So these comparisons, it's similar, but it's not exact. True, the software is changing, but for most people, those changes are not seen. At this point, it's the, the end users aren't really seeing it. True, the interface is changing, but you can still use the SAP GUI. At this point, it's still available. So you can make this change and it's not necessarily going to impact the end users. There is a time limit, but unlike Y2K, a company could continue to function on the ECC. It's not like it stops working. You just don't have support from SAP. So it's kind of like those, but it's not. It's, eh. 
So all of these butts that are in here, from what I have heard, the Americas are very slow to adopt. That's my experience, going to ASUG meetings, talking to people. North and South America, very limited adoption of S4 HANA. And the, what I hear at ASUG meetings is things like, we just got it working the way we want it. <laughs> we'll wait it out. This is the similar mentality to what I saw in the 90s for the DOS to Windows migration. You know, we just bought our computers. We just, we just did this. We know how to use WordPerfect. We'll, we'll wait. We'll wait for the next version. An issue with waiting it out, and this is not an SAP roadmap by any means. It's not SAP specific. It's general technology, just talking about moving to different versions. So let's say you're in ECC right now and you need to go to S4 HANA. At this point, what you'd need to do to go is map the data and all of your processes to make the transition. If you, at this point, we also have the optional interface, the SAP Fiori. Still, map data is part of this. What happens when a version in a couple of years requires SAP Fiori? There's no longer the SAP GUI. Again, it has already reached its end of life. So right now we have cloud is optional. What if cloud is required? You still have to map the data. Now you have to do, use this new interface and you have to move over to cloud. This is requiring a whole other specific set of skills that you didn't need earlier. So it would be adding on, if you were to jump in right now, you're adding on these things <laughs> instead of, oh, that's a lot we have to do. That's a lot more change management. That's a lot more we have to hire for. And then if you wait way too long, there's some crazy thing, we don't even know what it is, that's available in the future. And I'll talk about that in another video. I'll give you a historical example of crazy thing that actually put some companies out of business because they didn't make these changes. All right, so again, this discussion is SAP specific, but it relates to all ERP vendors. They're all facing a similar migration. They're all moving to a new user experience, cloud, subscription oriented, having the data more accessible. So again, this is not necessarily specific to SAP in concept, but this discussion certainly is SAP specific. So this is video one of four. There are three more videos that are coming. They are not modular in nature. I do recommend that you watch the rest of them. This is just an introduction.